Hi, and welcome to Knitting Downsized. This is a podcast about knitting, primarily about knitting, about life in a camper as a family of four with a little doggy, and I like to share our family adventures as we go along as well. So thank you for stopping by today. Be sure to check us out over on Instagram at Knitting Downsized as well. I don't post a whole ton over there, but I do post um, progress pictures and sometimes pictures of where we're at uh, whenever we go on our adventures and stuff. So if you're interested in more content, check us out over there. So uh, first off, I wanted to start off with my one of my very favorite sweaters that I have ever made, and it's kind of my go-to sweater. It is the Flax Pattern by Tin Can Knits, and I didn't do the bumpies on it, and I added a little bit of color work motif to it. It's just skull and crossbones. I initially made this for Kevin, and it did not fit him, of course. <laughs> um, I don't think I made the sleeves long enough, um, but I absolutely love it. It's kind of like those boyfriend jeans. This is like my boyfriend sweat sweater, and I have washed and dried it a ton of times. I absolutely love it. I highly recommend Barocco Vintage, and it has a little bit of alpaca in it, so I don't know if you can, oof, I don't know if I should show you, but it's got a little bit of halo on it. It's super duper warm and light at the same time. I absolutely love this yarn. So I found um, the, the way that I did this sweater is I did the whole flax all the way down to the raglan, and I found the color motif that I liked color work motif that I liked and just worked it out with the um, number of stitches that I had on the body at that time. So, and it was just really quick and easy. I think I found it off Pinterest, like a free um, color work motif pattern. So I do want to show you guys, my color work has come a long way. <laughs> this was one of my very first projects of color work, but I want to show you, I, I don't know if you can see all the little white blips in there, um, and it's not even really pulled tight, but this is one of the common mistakes that I used to do when I did color work, is on these long runs of um, your contrasting color, or your main color, I would carry the float in the same spot for like three or four rows, and it made your contrasting color look so obvious. You could see it, you know, straight to the front of your work. So that's a tip that I like to share whenever you're, you've got like sections of your main color where you have to carry, you're going to have to carry, um, and catch your yarn, catch it at different spots along the way. <laughs> Even if it seems weird and you're doing it at, you know, at odd intervals, I definitely, um, recommend catching it at different spots. So so that's my sweater. Definitely recommend the yarn. Once again, Broco Vintage, and it's the flax, just the regular flax. So, so on my last podcast, I shared with you guys that I got a wild hair, and I wanted to make four sweaters for all of our family, and I wanted us to take some pictures and have Christmas pictures and stuff. Well, I quickly learned that week after the podcast, because the podcast was on Thursday, and I needed them by Friday night. <laughs> there was no way I was going to finish um, with all the sweaters. But I, so I decided to do a hat for Kevin instead. I also realized that Kevin will probably never wear the vest that I was planning on making him except for the Christmas picture that we took. So I didn't want to devote that much time into making a project that would only be worn once. So um, I did finish my uh, love note, this giant <laughs> bubblegum pink love note. It blocked so great, guys. Look how, I'm not tooting my own horn, but toot toot. <laughs> it turned out so good. So I did, I didn't want to wear it today because it's kind of a gloomy day and it kind of feels weird to wear a bright color on a gloomy day, for me anyway. Um, so I did the long sleeves and I did kind of the uh, bubble sleeve. I decreased, I did just a straight amount of stitches the whole way down until I think five rows before I cast off and I did a quick decrease on both sides. And I love it. I absolutely love this little sweater. I did do the high 
in the front, lower in the back. And um, I absolutely love it. The color is not really in my wheelhouse, but I think if I found a pretty dress, like a sleeveless dress to go underneath it, it still is pretty cold sometimes um, for Easter around here. So I'm thinking maybe a pretty Easter dress or something. I don't know. We'll see. Of course, this Easter will probably be like 85, but. So that was my love note. And I finished that, I think on Monday, Sunday or Monday of this week. And I had already started Kevin's hat while we were there and actually finished it. This was a, a one day kind of hat project. And this hat is the Jelka hat, J-E-L-K-A hat by Isabel Kramer. At the time it was a free pattern. I believe it's still a free pattern. And it, she uses a gray and then one solid color for these stripes. But I wanted to incorporate the colors of all of our sweaters into this hat for him. So I did a different color for each of the stripes. So the pattern creates this really cool texture. It's a four row repeat. So you could probably do way, you know, tons of different repeats. It only calls for five repeats, but I only had four colors. So I just did the four. Um, and it's a, like I said, a four row repeat. It creates this really cool texture um, and little color work, kind of color worky. Definitely recommend the pattern. I want to put I'm gonna use all of these colors and do a gigantic pom-pom on the top too, I think. So, I really love it. So now I have tons of yarn left because I had enough to make him a vest. So I have tons of yarn left. So I think I might, I will probably incorporate some of that into the hats for my son's school, but also my son's sweater, I blocked it and it doesn't fit as well as I thought it would after I blocked it. So. I think that sweater might be handed down to Fiona immediately, and I think I have to make Clay another one, which is fine because I have a lot of green left over, and he really liked the green in it, so I'll probably have to make him another one. <laughs> um, on to another finished object. I finished actually last night. I was staying up because I work tonight, so I was staying up last night to kind of keep in practice with staying up late. So I wanted to make a two by two um, ribbed hat for a friend of ours, her son, just a really cool guy. And um, he lives up north, I believe, like Chicago area. I think he's getting his master's, Ooh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> um, upper ed education. He's, he's working on that right now. Um, so it's very cold up there. So I wanted to make him just a, a nice warm hat. This is the watch cap by Pearl Soho, a free pattern. I really like how they did their decreases. It is once again, it's a four row repeat and it's really super easy. Every time I do, I try to do a two by two hat on my own. I always end up with weird decreases and weird stuff. It does make the hat pointy like a triangle whenever it's just kind of laying there. Um, but it, whenever you put it on your head, it does kind of round out really, really well. So definitely recommend the pattern. This is some Malabrigo Rio, Rios that I've had for a while. It's kind of a bluey green and I'm really digging it. The, the hat does call for a lot of stitches it calls for like 120, 140, and 160 or something. It seemed like a lot of stitches. And the, the yarn didn't seem like it was like a fingering weight yarn either. Maybe I was, maybe I just wasn't looking. So I did, I did the 120 stitches for this. And it is kind of um, loose. I probably could have gone down to maybe even 100 stitches, but I wanted to make sure that I was able to follow the pattern verbatim. So, so those are my finished objects and on to my whips. So my knitting group, we started and several of the folks finished their arrow cowl. The arrow cowl is by Mia Rind and it's a really beautiful mosaic cowl. 
and it's um, a Malabrigo pattern. So I was gifted this pattern by Malabrigo. I uh, won one of the weeks in their October cow, and I really dig this pattern. I think it's really cool. So we chose, because our, our neighborhood purchased the yarn, um, I chose to purchase Cascade, and it's the Friday Harbor by Cascade. So the Friday Harbor is 80, 20, wool and silk so it is a really nice yarn it seems like a very sturdy yarn like it would be really great for maybe slippers or something um the pattern calls for sevens i think and seven yeah sevens and i went up to nines this friday harbor is listed as a worsted but it is a very dense worsted and um it almost feels kind of cottony with how i guess like you know cotton is kind of unforgiving it's kind of just a little bit stiff this it's not bad stuff because it does have a really lot of wool in it as well but I definitely recommend if you're gonna use it definitely gauge swatch because some of the ladies stuck with the sevens and they had a really difficult time um, going into their stitches once they had completed you know on the next round because their their stitches were so tight um, their gauge was so tight. So we really like this pattern. I am a little frustrated with the pattern. It, it's one of those patterns and I am very used to a pattern that kind of holds your hand as you, as you go along. This pattern definitely does not do that. It gives you the chart and the chart is a repeat and a half. And if you were to start the repeat over, it doesn't set upright. So it's 36 rows. In the, the last, I think, 13 rows are start another set, another uh, repeat of the pattern. And when you start at the very beginning of the chart again, it doesn't line up. So you have to really, I guess, pay attention at where you're at. If you want to do more than just one repeat, which this is, I am almost done with my second repeat of the, the color chart. So you def, I would think nobody wants a cowl that's you know, four inches thick. <laughs> so if you're going to do this pattern, definitely be wary of that and check out, um, Maggie. sorry, it's Maggie's in the floor playing with nutcrackers. Um, so definitely check out the color repeat because like I said, it doesn't line up. So don't just go, you know, start at the beginning again because it doesn't line up. So but I really do like the pattern. I like the fact that it is um, mosaic. It's kind of my first try into mosaic knitting and I'm really enjoying it. It's very, very easy, very memorizable. You're, you're essentially doing the same row twice or pretty much the same row twice. So it's kind of cool. I really like it. Um, so I've been working on that. I am going to, because our neighborhood uh, purchased or the community, I guess, purchase the yarn. I am going to finish this and do kind of a raffle in our neighborhood. Um, our neighborhood has adopted my son's school and they are purchasing sweatpants for the kiddos there. And in case they have accidents or if they go outside and get their pants wet or something happens, um, they are providing the school with several hundred dollars worth of sweatpants. And I'm going to raffle this cowl off and I think because I have a ton of yarn left I think I'm going to try to make some basic mittens and um, I'm going to use the world simplest mittens by 10k knits and make a pair of mittens to raffle off as well so that way they can have more money for that I'm all about donating to our school so they really super need it <laughs> so that's a project that I'm working on hopefully I will be finished with that um, tonight I'll probably work on that on my work break so I also have been working on my Elise it is in the ready set raglan book and it's at the very first pattern actually in the ready set raglan book and I am really enjoying it it's a really nice pattern something that is very um, easy to memorize and it makes a lot of sense to my brain I guess some patterns, I think, um, Wool Needles Hands podcast, she talked about how, this isn't a podcast several back, but about how some patterns just 
for her brain just don't make sense. And so it makes the whole pattern a little bit tougher um, to kind of slog through. But this pattern isn't like that to me. Um, I definitely have experienced those patterns where it's, it's hard to get through the pattern because you're like, why are we doing it this way? Or it's not something that's easy memorizable. You know, it's constantly changing or something like that. And this pattern is not that. This pattern is very easy. I definitely recommend it as a beginner pattern. If you are thinking about starting uh, sweater knitting, pick up the book, Ready, Set, Raglan. I think there's, I want to say at least eight sweater patterns in there. And there's all kinds of variations to the, the patterns that, that they offer you. Different weights and stuff like that. So highly recommend it. This is the very first one. It's, I'm so sorry. It is... I haven't separated for the um, sleeves yet, so it is very tight on my needles, but I just wanted to show you kind of how cool the, so this is a sleeve. And um, this is my chocolate chip vest that I took apart. This is Malabrigo Rios, and I believe this is Coco, and this is Frank Ochre. So, and I'm gonna add a, because I'm color blocking it at the very bottom, I'm going to add a uh, thick stripe of mauve or mauve. Mauve? Mauve? I'm going to add a, a thick stripe of that to the very bottom uh, just to add a little bit more uh, color interest there. So that is kind of going on the back burner for a little bit. I want to do some color, uh, some Christmas knitting. Um, I've got to finish the hats for my son's class. I would really like to finish those or another chunk of them before Christmas. It's actually really, really warm here, unseasonably so, which is frustrating as a knitter <laughs> because I just want to throw my sweaters on. It was like 53 today. <sighs> like, what is going on, y'all? And it was super gloomy and rainy yesterday and today. So um, I'm ready for winter, y'all. I'm ready. Hopefully, we have some type of white snow, white stuff around Christmas. My kiddos, my son especially, loves the snow, so I'm hoping we'll get some of that soon. Or at least just get in the 30s so I can wear my heavy sweaters. <laughs> this warm weather is driving me bonkers. Okay, so I wanted to share with you guys a book that I purchased before I left uh, for vacation, and I purchased it uh, through Amazon. I hope that's the, the most beneficial way for this gentleman to get money, but it's, it was the easiest way for me and it shipped and I, it was there at uh, my dad's house in just like two days. So um, that's the problem with camper living is you don't really have an address. Something to talk about if you're thinking about, <laughs> Maggie Mae, if you're thinking about um, moving in a camper, you don't really have an address. So a lot of our packages, Max, quit. A lot of our packages go to my dad's house, and we go and pick them up there. We do have a post office box, um, but a lot of our packages do have to go to family members' houses, <laughs> which isn't that much of a drag, but it would be nice if, like, when it says Amazon delivered, if it was at my door instead of 20 minutes away. So, um, so this is a book that I purchased, and... Um, I just did like a little like Instagram snoop on this guy or not snoop, but I went to his Instagram page and this dude has a lot going on. Like it's kind of crazy. It's crazy. Um, so oh, I'm going to butcher this real bad y'all, but I'll show it to you. Lasse Matt Modberg. Um, and it's Viking knits. This is definitely a book y'all that if you have men in your life, um, I mean, but there's definitely, there's tons of women, uh, few, you know, more feminine patterns in here as well, but, um, definitely a book that if you have men in your life, check this out. I, that was the whole purpose of this because it, he does have tons of more masculine patterns, I guess, or patterns, maybe not masculine, but patterns that my husband would wear, um, that don't have, you know, frilly details or, you know, weird Part, he would say weird parts to them. Um, so I definitely recommend this pattern. The color, the pictures in this guys are just freaking gorgeous. I want to go to Norway so bad. <laughs> and these pictures just make me so jealous. So I wanted to go through just a couple of these and show them to you. 
And um, I, he's got it set up in a couple different categories. Like this one, this is the midsummer sweater. And it's this textured, like Henley. Like how freaking gorgeous is that? Like, oh, it's so, it's so awesome. And, um, look at these jackets, y'all. Now, I, Kevin would never wear this, but this coat is so cool. So, like I said, there, there are, um, men, women, and children patterns in here as well. There's hats. There's tons of sweaters. Um, let me show you this little pattern. I'm trying to show you patterns that don't give away all his secret sauce. Like, come on, y'all. Like, oh, sorry. Oh, crap. So, I highly recommend this pattern book. Um, this is the little one. Oh, little dude. Highly recommend this pattern book. If you're looking for, like I said, just kind of generic, simple, to me, more masculine knits, or I guess less stuff going on knits, um, definitely check this book out. I, like I said, I purchased it on Amazon. I think it was right at $30 on Amazon. And the patterns, a lot of the pa patterns say they are uh, how does he phrase it? I think experienced, but it doesn't seem like you have to be super experienced. Maybe the construction, once I get into some of them, might be a little bit different with how you pick up the sleeves or maybe they're steaking or something, but I, I didn't see any of that in there. And a lot of them I did see were raglan. So I love a good raglan. Highly recommend that book, y'all. Um, everybody that I show the book to or show pictures of to said he looks like that. I can't believe it's not butter guy. <laughs> if you guys, if you guys are old enough to remember that guy, but, um, anyway, so, and check him out on, um, Instagram as well. Uh, he does have an Instagram. He's got some pretty cool, um, travel pictures and stuff going on. So I think that's it for knitting for this week, y'all. I start my week of work. Today is my Monday and I work the whole weekend. So work is going good. I'm learning and hopefully catching up and figuring stuff out. We switch um, our emergency department. We actually have a brand new emergency, emergency department. So tonight is my first night in that department. So I'm kind of excited. And um, I don't know what we're doing this weekend. I think it's supposed to be pretty crummy this weekend, which kind of stinks. Like, it does make good, like, knitting weather, though, and good napping weather because I have to do a lot of that <laughs> since I uh, work all night. So, um, I think that's it, guys. I think that's all I've got. I'm trying to think if I have anything else crazy going on in my life right now. I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, we don't have any trips planned. I think we are going to stay at the hotel. Oh, I have my Roku remote. Um, the hotel for Christmas for my kiddos. So I'm booking that um, and working on that. But I think that's it, guys. I hope you guys have a super great weekend. And if you have any questions about any of the knits that I've, I'm working on, if you have, um, if you want some more information or information on the book, um, I usually post in the notes below the um, pattern name and designer. I'm not really good at linking yet, but I'm going to start trying to do that. Um, but if you have any, any questions, leave me a comment below or hop on over to Instagram and let me know over there. So I hope you guys have a great weekend and I will try to get my next po podcast out on an actual Thursday instead of a Friday. So I hope you guys have a great weekend and enjoy your knitting. Bye.